Hey guys, uh, welcome to Sue Miami. And here we are on the most important oasis for the Florida Bonneted Bad in Miami. Uh, this is the Pine Rock and Forest. This is the uh, second largest fragment of this kind of forest in left in all the state. And this is very important habitat for the Florida Bonneted Bad. Here you can see one of the installations, one of the artificial roots that we have for the species. And right now it's occupied and let's go and check it. So to check out how many uh, individuals we have in each roost and the bat boxes that we have placed, we have this little thing we've created where we attach this uh, Wi-Fi camera to the to a power bank and we connect it to the iPad so it'll show us the image while we extend the Hastings pole up into the bat house and then it shows us the bats as they are in there live. <laughs> So we're very lucky. This bat house uh, has a, a, a group of eight individuals inside. And this is our first generation of artificial roots that we use in the project. And since that point, we've been really concerned about uh, global warming and how we provide a long-term solution for the bats. We've been doing research and trying and testing different uh, uh, designs of roots. And, and I'm going to show you later on the other designs that uh, we found that provide a more stable microclimate for the bats. Okay, this is a rocket box uh, design and specifically it was designed for the Florida Bonneted Bat in consultation with the Fish and Wildlife Service. And in this one, we've been testing uh, how uh, is the microclimate is stable for the Florida Bonneted Bat and it's one of the best designs that we have. And it's going to provide multiple uh, zones for the bats with different temperatures so they can move within the roots to selecting what they prefer. Uh, the other advantage of this is going to provide a clean exit for them. And we tend to select areas where they can fly without any obstacle. And, and, and this is a, a perfect area for them next to a lake that can have a really nice view. Here, we have a different approach. We have uh, a design where we tend to uh, recreate the natural roots of the Florida bonneted bat. So we have uh, a snack, we open it, we create a cavity uh, and trying to have the same space that they're going to find in natural uh, uh, areas. We install sensors, you can see some of the cables in there. So we have measured temperature and humidity and that is the way we're tracking uh, that microclimate, that temperature inside of the roost and if it's stable enough through the year for the bats. And we're lucky enough that the bats like this version uh, we have a nice, uh, stable group inside, and we're going to see it in a second. We can see a group of Florida bonneted bat. We use these cameras and these videos uh, to know the size of this particular group and overall the size of the population that we have in Miami-Dade County. Also, it's very helpful to let us know when they have pups and when they're recruiting more members to each of the groups so we can understand a little better the behavior of these bats in urban settings. So the Florida bonneted bat is only found South Orlando to Miami in both coasts of South Florida. And from all the bats that are in danger in the United States, this is the species that have the smallest range distribution, limited uh, where they can move. The other thing is this species that is more kind of a tropical species or subtropical and is called intolerant. So that limit in Orlando or south of Orlando is where we can see more freezing temperatures during the winter. So that is the limited factor that in, uh, limit the distribution of the species. The Florida bonneted bat initiative has as a goal, recover and conserve the Florida bonneted bat. Um, we're working mainly on their two main threats. One is the increase in frequency and intensity of major storms as a hurricanes. And those are affecting mainly uh, the roots availability across the range. The other main thread that we are working is uh, with development. Development is affecting as well, you know, natural areas that have trees where we can find natural roots for the bats, but also foraging areas like this one that we have here. 